God for who he is and what he's already done. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are in the house of the Lord and we come to lift up the Lord. How many of you showed up today to lift up the name of Jesus? He is our Lord. He is our King. He is the great conqueror of Calvary. Oh, we lift our hands to praise him even right now.
joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Let us go to God in prayer. Eternal God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus Christ we come. We come, Lord, for we realize that there is no one like you. We may look the world over, but we've discovered that there is none like you. God, we honor you today. We magnify you today. We, we lift you today, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for who you are, for what you do. We thank you for giving us health, life, and strength. Lord, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we realize that we've fallen short. we messed up. we sinned. Lord, we ask you not to hold it against us, but forgive us, Lord. Lord, we ask you that nothing hinder us from being in your presence and in your sight, Father God. We ask you to bless us today. Now we realize, Father God, that you are the holy God. You're the only one who watches over us and keeps us. You're the one that kept us last night and woke us up this morning. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Lord, you gave us our right mind to make our way to the house of prayer, to lift up the name of Jesus. For that, Lord, I say thank you. Now, Lord, we've come, Father, to lift up your name. We've come, Lord, to bless your holy name. Lord, we come, Father God, to give you honor, give you glory, and give you praise. We ask you to bless us now, Father God. We bless the Holy Spirit to rule and super rule. We pray, Father God, that you bless us and experience you like never before. We pray, Father God, that you come not only in the building, but reside in the building. Manifest yourself in this place today. That lives will be changed and hope will be renewed and, and, and deliverance will be at, at the doorpost and that we will be delivered from all sin and shame. And Lord, we thank you now. We call on you for we know that you're the only true God. We know that you're the only living God. We know, Father God, that you can do it and if it can't be done, it's not because you can't do it. And Lord, we ask you to bless us now. Speak to us, Lord. Keep us focused, Lord. Bless our hearts and our minds, Lord, that we will walk with you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for those who have shown up. We thank you for those who are listening. We thank you for those who are walking with you, Father. Lord, we ask you to bless us even as of today to be a living sacrifice for you. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It's in the precious, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank you. There is no, there is no.
22 and 23, and that's through verses 23 and 20 through 24. Verses 22 through 24. Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 through 24. In the New Testament, when you get to the New Testament, stop right there. Matthew is the first book. Amen. Matthew chapter 12. So that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. I want to talk about Jesus, the Son of David. Amen. Jesus, the Son of David. In these great United States of America, we are at another pivot point in leadership. Everybody wants to lead. Everybody want to relead. <laughs> Word I just made up. <laughs> Everybody wants to lead again. In other words, there, there is one who wants to sit on the throne. Yes, sir. There is one who wants to be our king. There is one, in spite of a difference of a few years, who declares, that he's in better shape than the other. Everybody want to lead. Everybody want to relead. Everybody wants to sit on the throne. Because they have concluded that sitting on the throne gives them power. Sitting on the throne gives them prestige. Sitting on the throne, even though it doesn't suppose to pay much, will give them just what they need, and they will go down in history as the greatest president of the United States of America. There's one who's been accused, and there's one who has been accused over and over, some 91 times, with over 30 convictions. There's one, there's one who has come to the conclusion that I am the greatest. He has even said that I can save you without a silly cross. There's one who wants to sit on the throne that people are bowing down to him regardless of what has taken place in the past. Everybody wants to lead. And everybody thinks they are qualified to really lead. But when we look at the text this morning, we see the son of David, Jesus himself. He's the only one who's qualified to lead. And he's the only one who is qualified to relead. His name is Jesus. Regardless who's in the Oval Office, Jesus will sit on the throne from now on. Regardless who's in Congress, regardless of, of who is calling the shots on planet Earth, Jesus will always sit on the throne. In the text, in the text we find the Pharisees who were fair, you see. We have the Pharisees that's all waiting 
it up to Jesus trying to catch him in some stuff. In the text, we find the Pharisees. The Bible doesn't say, but theologians believe that these Pharisees brought this man who was blind and mute to Jesus just to check Jesus out. Just to see what Jesus would do. Let me tell you, the world is watching you. And as the world is watching Christians, as the world is watching Christians, as the world is watching believers, they are waiting to see how we're going to handle this thing. The world is waiting to see what, what Christians will do. And, and Christians have failed, especially those who call themselves evangelicals, have failed miserably in the face of God. In the text, they are watching Jesus. They are watching Jesus as they are watching you today. And there's a watching world looking to see how you're going to handle it. What you're going to do. Are you going to bag out and say, we don't have any real choices today? Are you going to bag down and say, well, my vote doesn't count anyway? Are you going to say that, well, if it does happen, it's okay if it's happening. But will you, will you come to the point where you understand, regardless of what happens, you play a major role in what happens? The text, the text, Jesus is a healer. Matthew calls him the son of David. He tells this story, he tells the story by somebody brought this demon-possessed man to Jesus, and this man had issues. Is there anybody in the house that got some issues? I mean, just, just one thing going on in your life that, that you wish it wasn't there. If you're like me, you got a multitude of issues. You got stuff going on in you, stuff going on outside of you, stuff going on within you and without you. There are stuff going, there are things going on around you that you really don't want to deal with. Any witnesses in the house? When we look at the text, this man has some issues. This man is demon possessed. He is devil possessed. The devil lives in him. The devil walks with him. The devil talks with him. He is demon-possessed. This man, this man is demon-possessed. He is demon-possessed. And when you are demon-possessed, you are demon-oppressed. Yeah, when you're demon-possessed, when one is demon-possessed, the devil tells you what to do, and you do it. When you're demon-possessed, the devil says, go, and you go. The devil says, come and you come. When you're demon-possessed, the devil has a way of directing your path. And I contend if you're born again, I contend that if you're saved, I contend if you love Jesus, I contend that you've received Jesus as your Savior, you can be demon-influenced but not demon-possessed. The demon has a way of influencing us. He, he starts off by saying stuff like this. He says, he says, child, that's when you know he's getting ready to influence you. He starts out talking something like this. If I were you. He says, girl, I wouldn't do that if I was you. I wouldn't let that happen if I was you. It always concerns me when people are able to tell you what they can do when they're not doing what you're doing and they're not in the position you're in. I mean, some of the best, some of the best influences, some of the best advice for married folk come from single folk. I mean, they can tell you, Brother Willow, they can tell you what how you should not put up with. They'll tell you, Sister Willow, girl, I wouldn't deal with that. I would have walked out a long time ago. Some of the best advisors, some of the best counselors, some of the best coaches are those who are not in your same position. And then when they say, when it, they, it's not enough for them to congratulate you. It's not enough for them to say, congratulations, I thank God for you. What they'll do is say, you put up with him all those years, 50 some years, that's a long time to be with anybody. Good friend of mine, good friend of mine talks about the fact that that he and his brother showed up at a young lady's house and the young lady wasn't present, but that her older, her, her, her older aunt and her mom was there, and the older aunt began to ask them questions like old folk do. Who your folk? 
brother did. He said, I'm a minister of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. She said, well, are you married? And she said, he said, no, I used to be married for 20-some years, but I got a divorce. And the old woman said, what kind of preacher are you? <laughs> you can't even keep your marriage together. So the young man asked the senior woman, are you married? She said, no, baby, but I was married till my husband died. I was married 50 some years, some years and all of them were hell. Here she is that has walked with the demons, that has spent time with the demons, have been demon oppressed, demon depressed, and demon possessed, and she can give the world advice and she can criticize others. Let me tell you, the best thing to do is get along with God and see what the Lord has to say about it. Then you make your decision, and when God leads you into a decision, don't wait on the advice of anybody else. Right. This man, this man in the text was demon possessed. He was demon oppressed, and he was demon depressed. Anytime we get caught up in stuff that leads us down a dark path, it just takes a little sight of this, and that's why we tell our children. Be careful what you see. Be careful what you hear. Be careful where you walk because it just takes sight of a little thing and it will lead you way down the road into a dark path. And before, before you know it, you're trying, to, you're trying to juggle monkeys and after a while it turns into King Kong. It's because demons are active and living today. It's because demons are real. It's because whether you dream about them or not, it's because demons are active and in the world in which we live. And they're after God. They're after God's people. And, and they're trying to influence God's people to do demonic stuff. To say demonic things. You, you've seen it, haven't you? You've seen children tell parents to sit down and don't do what they, what, what they want to do. Do what I tell you to do. Last week, I heard about 65 times, I'm 81 years old. What that means is, I'm old, I can't get around like I used to, but the fact is, I'm still your mama, and I tell you where to go, tell you what to do, until my dying days, and you're going to respect it, too. Demon influence. You see men leave good household, good women, good set of children, to go hang out with some filly on the street. Demon influence. You've seen women who, who walk out on a family that she has been with to hang out with some woman talking about women know what women need. Demon influence. You've seen children that, that go to school, stay there for one class and skip the rest of them. Demon influence. You've seen people give their, their less and not their best. It's because they're demon influence. Even at the church, we find influence where, where people know that we need help. Know that there's an issue going on that we can fix. Know that we're qualified to do it. And we sit back and let it unfold and fall. Demon influence. The man in the text, he was blind, meaning he couldn't see. The man in the text was, was so blind until he couldn't see even figures. He, he couldn't see what was going on around him. The man in the text was blind, meaning that he couldn't see anything. He could hear well, but he couldn't see. He could, he could hear your instructions, but he couldn't see how to perform. He could, he could hear what you wanted him to do, but he could not see how to act upon it. When the devil influences you, when the devil moves in your life, when the devil gets near you, when the devil influences you in such a way, you can see what's going on around you, but you just can't get out of it. 
When the devil influences you, you know that you need to be out of it, but you just can't turn it loose. You begin to get into songs like, if love and you is wrong, I don't want to be right. You begin to get to a point in your life where, where you sing songs that you don't, you know that are not true, but you hang it in there anyway. You know years ago you should have walked away. You should have left it alone. You should have given it 50 feet. You should have done something differently. But you just hung in there because you were like Eve. You saw that it was looking good. You saw that it tastes good. And you saw that it was prideful to you. It makes you look good. Pride makes you look good. It makes people think you're somebody that's not. It's called demon nothing. The man in the table was blind because he was demon he, he wasn't blind because he was born blind. He wasn't blind because something put his eyesight out. He was only blind because he was demon possessed. Have you ever looked at a person and you can see demons? Have you ever listened to a person and you can hear demons? Have you ever been around a person and you can feel the demons? People are blind to the things of God because they are demon influenced or demon possessed. Next thing the man, the Bible says, the man, the man was demon possessed, and he was mute. If Kevin was to hit this mic phone button back there, don't hit it, Kevin. If he would hit that button that said mute, it would shut me down. It would shut me off. You saw the debate; they had to hit the mute button a few times. And when you are mute, you can't speak. You can think it, but you can't speak. You can think you're saying it, but people can't hear you. This man wasn't mute because he was born without vocal cords. This man was mute because he was demon possessed. I'm trying to drive home today that we need to hear the son of David. He was mute so he couldn't see. He was mute so he couldn't speak. But here comes the son of David. He is the son of David. The, the Old Testament prophets prophesy that there will be one in this earth, one that will walk this earth, and one that will sit in heaven on the throne that came from the lineage of David. Here Jesus comes, born in the city of David, called Bethlehem. Here David, Jesus comes, and he is of the lineage of the lineage of Joseph, who was the lineage of David. When you read Matthew chapter 1, it, it gives you the fact that he came down through 42 generations. And in 42 generations did Jesus flow down through this genealogy so that he can save wretches like us. It says 14 years, 14 years, 14 years. He came down through 42 generations. And from David to Jesus is 27 of those 42. He's of the lineage of David. In Luke chapter 18, there's a blind man that calls him the son of David. In Matthew chapter 20, there are two blind men that call on him the son of David. In Mark chapter 10, blind Bonamatus call on him the son of David. Matthew takes six different shots at it, and he, he addresses Jesus as the son of David, because as the son of David, he's the Messiah that will rule over the world. He is the son of David, he is a descendant of David, and he will set the set on the throne, and he will rule from now on. There's one in our day and time that says, on day one, he's going to show you what a dictator is all about. He's going to make sure you understand what dictatorship is all about. He's going to tell men to go and they will go. And if they don't go, they'll kill the men then. But this son of David, this king who sits on the throne, Jesus himself is here for deliverance. He's here to deliver us from all our vices. He's here to deliver us from all our troubles. He's here to deliver us back to God and bring us to God. I want to make a few points and I'm going to leave you alone. My first point is that Jesus handles demons and demon possession. Jesus knows how to handle Jesus. 
how to handle demons and demonic spirits. Jesus knows how to handle it. Don't be fearful. Don't walk away. Watch how Jesus handles demon possession and demonic spirits. Well, it says to me one time, I was young in the faith. I mean, I just trusted God. When you're young in the faith, you can trust God because you ain't seen other people. I was young in the faith, and, and at that time, they, they had dogs, and they had needles, and they had pictures. The woman said, all I need is one of your pictures. And if I get hold of one of your pictures, you're going to go when I say go. You're going to sleep when I say sleep. You're going to wake up when I say wake up. I said, wait a minute, baby. Give me just a moment. And at that time, we didn't have digital pictures. I reached in my pocket. Everybody carried pictures of themselves and their children and their family members in their pocketbook. So I reached in my pocket, pulled out my pocketbook, and I said, here, baby, you can have this one. Have your way. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. And to this day, she has never controlled me because Jesus knows how to handle demonic spirits. She said, I have you climbing up walls. She said, I have your bed, your bed shaking at night. She, she, didn't, she wasn't able to do it because I sleep like a baby. I snow like a baby. I slobber like a baby. I get good rest at night because she can't do anything with the conquering king of Calvary, Jesus himself. Jesus knows and Jesus can handle demons and demonic spirits. Jesus can handle it. Jesus can handle it. Jesus. Who can handle it? Jesus can handle it. He knows how to handle demonic spirits. My next point to you today, Jesus heals those with difficult situations. Jesus heals those with difficult situations. You may think your situation is real bad. You may think that things that you're going through, no one else has it, it amazes me how when prophets come to town, they, they, they rent out the Coliseum, and then they bring you up. The folks stand in long lines. He said, and the prophet says, I know you have children. How many children you have? One of them is doing something bad, right? Yeah, yeah, not only one, all of them. You've been praying for your children, right? Yeah. What Christian don't pray for their children? He said, but the word of God is telling them. And you know their voices change. And, and they gotta they, they gotta impress upon you that they got, got a word from the Lord. He said, the Lord is impressed upon me right now. That child you've been praying for is gonna come home by in the morning. He knows that you'll never see him again. He knows that after he gets your five hundred dollars, he's gone to the next stop. He knows that, that once you contribute and, and you commit to a regular love offering to him, he knows that he doesn't have to deliver because you voluntarily gave it to him. And when you go to court, they're going to say you voluntarily sent it. He knows all of that. He says, now, in the moment, you're going to be blessed beyond measure. And you got a financial problem, don't you? Well, if you're the prophet, you tell me what problem I got. If you call of God and you're the one who's going to fix my situation, you tell me what my situation is, and then I'll tell you whether you hit it on target. It amazes me. It amazes me how many people walk out and give money to folk that they don't even know and scams are all over the world and you won't give God 10% at your home church. Jesus knows how. Your situation today may be tough. It may have may be worse than you've ever seen in your life. But I recommend Jesus. Jesus knows how to handle your difficult situation. And he can handle it without the help of any prophet. He can handle it without the help of anybody calling you down the aisle. He can handle it without you paying for it. Uh-uh. He can handle it without you paying for it. You do what you call to do. You do what God has asked you to do, and you don't have to get in another line. 
Amazing me how many people get in line to receive the Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm going down there. And then when they come on the television broadcast and the radio broadcast, they say it like this. And now the internet broadcast, oh, he's walking the floor like never before. He's passing out blessings. And he's doing it. And you better get there because, because you're going to miss out on your blessing. Let me tell you, God knows where I am. God knows who I am. And he can drop my blessing off everywhere I am without being somewhere else.
Whenever there's a storm headed our way, this is my prayer. God kill it all out in the water. God shut it down before it gets here. God deliver us because you are the deliverer. You are the one who keeps us. The songwriter says it like this. There's a storm out in the ocean. It is headed this way. If your soul is not anchored in Jesus, it will slowly slip away. I'm telling you, we got to trust him regardless of what we're going through. We have to trust him regardless of what comes our way. We have to move with him. Paul says it like this, in him I live. In him I have my being. In him I move. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my very being. I'm going to move with him. I'm going to rock with him. It doesn't matter what comes. I'm going to trust in Jesus. Because he has paid the cost. He paid the cost to sit on the throne. He is the son of David. He has a way of taking the wind and making it shut down. He, he has a way, and it doesn't matter if it's a category one or a category five. Jesus has a way of shutting it down. I, I'm telling you, Jesus has a way of shutting it down because he's able to handle our difficult situations and don't get depressed. I say to you, I say to you, Jesus can bless us in our depression. He can bless us in our depression. There's a group of people in Houston. Every time a few drops of rain fall, they remember Hurricane Hall. And how Hurricane Harvey took all their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Hurricane Harvey whacked through their house. They saw their slippers floating on top of the water. Every time a drop of rain fall, they, 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 saw, they saw their clothes pass by them in the water. They saw the walls begin to get drenched with water from the floor all the way to the ceiling. They remember sitting on top of the rooftop waiting on a helicopter to show up to deliver them. Let me tell you, don't get depressed. The same God that delivered you and your stuff last time, he is able to deliver you now. Don't get depressed. Don't get depressed. Put your trust in him. He is able to do it. Put your trust in him. He's trying to remind us to talk to him and put our faith in no man. He's trying to remind us to make sure that we keep our hearts turned toward him. He's trying to remind us that daddy can't fix it. Mama can't fix it. Your neighbor can't fix it. But Jesus is able to fix our difficult situation. And just because the storm out there, we have just not fallen in. It didn't just happen that we fell into difficult situations. We've had some difficult situations that we haven't seen since 2015. We've been in the midst of some difficult situations. Whenever a nation turns their backs on the holy God, you're going to find yourself in some difficult situations. Whenever a nation decides that we're going to run this thing the way we want to run, Whenever, and I remember President Obama, whenever he stood and congratulated same-sex marriages and overlooked the marriage, the heterosexual marriages that have been together for 50 years, I knew then that we're in a bad shape. And, and we, one, many of us thought, oh, this is our great black hope. And now some believe that Trump is our great orange hope. But we have to come to the conclusion the only hope we have lies in Jesus. The only hope we will receive it will come from Jesus. It doesn't matter who takes and moves around our finances, who deals with Social Security, or what they do. Our hope lies in Jesus because one of these days, the same Jesus that died on Calvary, he's coming back to rescue us. He is the son of David. We are saying we ought to vote, we ought to, we ought to state our case, we ought to look forward to, to getting things right on planet Earth, but there's something that's going to take place after planet Earth. And one of these days, we got to leave here. One of these days, we got to move on. One of these days, it doesn't matter how you're built, doesn't matter how you feel, you're going to leave this place. 
You need to make sure that you go to the right place. You need to be putting up some timber right now. The senior saint says, I'm sending up timber. I, I'm sending up timber every day. What they're saying is, I'm born again. What they're saying is, I love the Lord. But while I'm on planet Earth, I'm going to send up some timber so I can be rewarded on the other side. What they were saying is, I'm going to work for the Lord right here. Working for the Lord may not pay much, but the benefits are out of this world, I tell you. Jesus made a way for us. He is the son of David. He is the Messiah. He is the one who's going to make a difference in these tough and evil days. If he can handle demon possession, if he can handle, handle demonic spirits, he can handle your little problems. When, when you get to a bad place in your life, you realize what you complained about yesterday wasn't that big at all. When you're going down a dark road, you remember that what you've gone through and who brought you through it. And whatever your sickness is today, you look back on that sickness and say, God sure did bring me out. Right today, right today, you can't stop Sister David from talking about the Lord because in 2029, November 2019, November 11th, she got some bad news. She was already on fire for the Lord. But let me tell you, you can't shut her down now because when she looks over the shoulder of her life, she see what God has done in, in the midst of cancer, when cancer was wiping other folk out, when, when a, a pandemic was live and well, God blessed her. Now every time she start praying, she start crying. Every time she start talking about the Lord, she gets excited. It's because of what God has already done. So whatever you're going through now, it will be nothing when God walks up and blesses. It will be nothing. It will be nothing. What, Lord, what I'm going through now, Paul says it like this. He said, this present day suffering is not to be compared to the glory that is yet to be revealed on the other side. I get excited about that. I get excited because whatever I'm going through now, there is no comparison. Therefore, we got to get on fire for the Lord. We, in the midst of our headaches, in the midst of our heartaches, we got to get on fire for the Lord. And when we're on fire for the Lord, the Lord sees it and we're sending up timber. Don't send up excuses. Send up timber. Meaning that I'm building on an eternal house. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that when this earthly tent this earthly building, this house that we live in, this body is dissolved down here. We have another building, not made by hands. It's made by the hands of God. It, it is eternal in heaven. And let me tell you, in order to move in your new house, you got to be prepared to move in. You must make preparation down here in order to move in over there. There's a general contractor to that house. It is not anything that we've heard of other than God himself. This house is built by the hands of God. Jesus says, I am going to prepare a place for you. That where I will be, you will be also. And we will forever be with the Lord. That same Jesus died on Calvary. That same Jesus was nailed tight. This Jesus, the son of David, he, he was dropped low. He was lifted high. That same Jesus, the son of David, mean men killed him on a skull hill called Calvary. They killed him, and after he was dead, they pierced him in his side. Out came blood and water. The blood is for the cleansing of this nation. Out came blood and water. There was an epidemic on the on the on Calvary. There, there was epileptic on Calvary. There was dark in the middle of the day. It was midnight at midday on Calvary. One centurion soldier cried out, Surely this must be the Son of God. They took him off the cross laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because they didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because early that third day morning before the rooster could crow, before Pilate could change the guard, before the dew was off the ground, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. He rose from the dead. He went to prepare a place for us. That same Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father 
making intercession for us. And we are too mean to confess our sin. I didn't say confess it to us. Confess it to Jesus. And as we confess our sin to him, he makes intercession for us. He makes intercession. Lord, I know they deserve to die, but give them another chance. I know they don't even need to be in your presence, but Lord, I die for them. That Jesus that rose early that third day morning from the dead is making intercession for us. And the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, he says that don't cry over those who, who have already died in Christ as if you have no hope. He said, don't sorrow as if you have no hope, but those who died in Christ, they shall be resurrected to a new life in Christ. And those who have died, Jesus will bring those with them. Don't worry about whether you bury them on the ground or whether you cremate them. Jesus is going to put it all back together again because he is the awesome God. The Bible says at the trump of God, at the voice of an archangel, Jesus is going to take all the bodies and put it back together again. And it says he will stop in midair and we will forever be with the Lord and we will be on the other side praising and worshiping him. The door of the church is open. The door is open. The door is you're here today, you've never received Jesus. The son of David, the son of God, as your personal savior, this is your moment. You need to try Jesus. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be oppressed. And you don't have to be possessed. You can try Jesus today. Jesus can bless us in our difficult situation. Jesus can handle the demons and the demonic spirits. Jesus can heal us from all our troubles and all our pains. I say trust Jesus today. Trust the one who died for you, the one who lived for you, and the one who's able to bless you. You never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. Try Jesus. Just bow your head with me and repeat this simple prayer and invite Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Save my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.
lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gift, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for these gifts. We ask you to bless them in Jesus' name.